Well, thank you very much, Ken Workington. Welcome, everyone, to the weekend at the Meadowlands. And yes, indeed, our good friend, one of the most popular and certainly the most unique announcers in harness racing, the voice of Freehold, Larry Letterman, is with us right now. And Larry, first of all, let me give, everybody you, tw- let me give you twenty for that, Sam. Hold I on was one hoping second. for a fifty. Five, thank you. Do you have a fifty. Uh, used Coffee to, not anymore. Okay. We got to get the health update out of the way. Everybody knows you're battling brain cancer. You just finished the 42 straight days of chemo and radiation. You still look pretty good, considering. How you feeling? Uh, not bad. I'm my makeup artist, George Anthony. Here got me looking good, so that was looking. But uh, how am I feeling? Well, I kind of underestimated the enemy, Sam. To be honest with you, I was doing good up until the last eighth of a mile, and then the kind of enemy kind of took me over. They said you're going to start to forget things. Uh, I guess the brain cells were not that I have much to begin with um, the kind of evaporating. I'm very tired all the time, but it is what it is. I have an MRI coming up on uh, the 21st of February, and then we'll turn it over to uh, Dr. McKee and see what he has to say. But um, in this case, the, uh, dis- the cure is worse than the disease. Well, Larry, one reason that you're here tonight that people should know about, you won the U.S. Harness Writers Association William R. Houghton Good Guy Award and had to tape your acceptance speech because you're not allowed to fly right now because of your medical condition. And that speech was uh, four score and seven years ago. This could be the first miniseries speech ever at the awards. <laughs> Pretty much so. I, um, yeah, I, I was, was thrilled to win the award. Uh, and it's funny because Willie Horton was like my favorite trainer driver growing up. But I understand in the voting um, that I just beat out Bernie Madoff by one vote. And that's because Lin- Lindsay Lohan had a choice of two and voted for me. But, you know, you take what you can get these days. But, yeah, honestly, it was, uh, it was pretty good stuff. Larry, I spoke with you after your first of the 42 days of the chemo and radiation to see how things went. You said, Sam, it was one of the worst days of my life, also one of the best, because you got a phone call from a very odd fellow that you've been a fan of for a long time. Yeah, um, well, it happened through a gentleman named Barry Abrams. The, Barry Abrams, remember, way back when, as a gentleman in trade guts, he trains horses now on the West Coast, and he has been, he's befriended me. He's just been a terrific guy. Um, and he happened to be a friend of Jack Klogman. So, Jack, so I said, I want to talk to Jack Klogman. He calls me one day, and he puts him on the phone. I said, Jack, you made me laugh for 35 years, and I'm going to make you laugh. And I just started quoting lines, you know, from the odd couple. You know, he was beautiful. He was last. That with golden earring and the horse. And, I just started, and he just started laughing hysterically. And he said, when you come out here, I, uh, I, you gotta, I, we, you gotta, I'm come, come over to my house. He married Bing Crosby's daughter. Um, Anyway, so I got in friendly with Jack Klugman, and on top of that, then Barry, a few days later, was, was at the track and says, I want you to sing happy birthday to him, to somebody. And I said, who is it? And he put me on the phone, and it was Dick Van Patten. So I've made some friends, you know, in the elderly community. But listen, if anybody wants to be my friend at this point, I'll take it. So let's see. That's Klugman, Van Patten, and you and De Niro were already friends. Oh, we've always been very close. He must have lost my phone number because I haven't heard from him in uh, (laughs) 20 years. Uh, Bob, if you're listening to me, I'll I'll give it to you. Just 609 and then wheel the rest of the numbers and you'll catch it. But anyway, uh, yeah, I do miss the Bronx Tale. I wish they'd call me up for something else. But right now I'm kind of busy in the basement (laughs) and talking to you a lot on the emails on the phone. But I got to I got to. I tell you, Sam, honestly, this has been medically a horrible experience, a life experience, second to none. It's been absolutely the best. I've gotten so much support. Um, you have been terrific. Everybody's been terrific. George Anthony, uh, who is right here, and I'll give him $5 to also. But everybody, the fans have been sending me emails, and it, you know, and honestly, it does help. It, it's, it's, been, it's been great for the worst reasons. Well, Larry, we're all cheering for you. We're all pulling for you, that's for sure. But your list of celebrities started when you were really young, when you were an aspiring comedian, which you still are a comedian. Didn't you and Robin Williams work together in New York City? Well, they had a place called Catch a Rising Star on 80th Street somewhere, and I lived in Manhattan. And uh, they had three acts. I did it first. I did it on a Monday night. And they liked it. And they brought me back for another Monday. And they said, "Okay, you're going to appear on stage." There's three acts, and they brought me on as the first one. George Wallace, who I think warms up and he was a he comedian ran for in Vegas, president yeah. once, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. He didn't do too good either. He's like a loser like me. But the uh, the third one was uh, Robin Williams. And he was, he was the third act, and I saw Robin, and it was a little hard to talk to because he was a little bit incoherent. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> those, were, those were the days in the early 80s. And uh, congratulations to Robin and congratulations to George Wallace. And I'm still, uh, I'm still working my way up. <laughs> well, let's talk announcing stories because every announcer has some now. Is it true? Can you confirm or deny did you once page a car with its lights on and it was your own car? That, that's, that's, that is the truth. I, 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 I got new plates for the car and I paged at Atlantic City and I kept on paging the person with the owner of so-and-so and I read the license plate and I got a third phone call because usually people would run out and see the lights on in the car with the lights being on. It's very easy to spot. Well, I started walking to the car at night and I see the lights are really dim in this car and I said, look at this knucklehead. He didn't come down to do it and as closer I got to the lights, it was my car. <laughs> so, yes, AAA, if you're interested, get AAA because they had to come over and boost my car and so it goes. Now, when you're calling races, does the phone ever ring during the middle of a race? Has that happened to you? Yeah, I, it happened several times. I had uh, one time the phone rang and I just ignored it or I punted across the room while it's, while it's ringing. But one time I said, I'm answering the phone. I just stopped it. I stopped the call. I go, hold on, everybody. I got to answer the phone. And I left the mic right next to me on purpose. And I said, Hillary, I can't help you with this one. You're going to have to work it out with Bill. And I just hung up the phone and went back to call the race. How about uh, hot tips? you ever get any hot tips from owners that you could uh, possibly capitalize <laughs> well, on? Well, the, the gentleman I speak of, I think you know, there was a gentleman... I think he passed away recently, Vince Timphony. He's a trainer of Wild again, and he was a real character. And Vince had, as far as I know, was pretty known. He was a terrific trainer and a fun guy, but he was known to cash a bet here and there. I was at Atlantic City, and they had no betting machines in the press box at that time. Phone rings to the 10th race. It's 11.30 at night, our time. And the gentleman calls up. I don't want to say his name, but we'll, I'm going to say B.A. was his initials. So his goes, initials might have been William Allen. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, and he goes... Uh, <clears throat> B.A. here, yeah? Boja City. How you doing? What, what did my horse pay? And how much did he win by? I said, Mr. A, the race didn't go off yet. You got to wait another 15 minutes. I'll call you back. Okay? 15 minutes goes by. The phone rings. That some the horse got loose or something. It wasn't his horse. And they delayed the race five minutes. And he gets on the phone and goes, Larry, Mr. Allen here. He goes, Boja City. And, okay? And he said, well, how much did my horse pay? And what did he win by? And I'm saying, oh, my goodness, Larry, what are you doing? He's, he's giving you the lottery numbers before they even draw. But they had no betting machines in the press box. And in those days, I would bet a few dollars. No cell phones either, right? No cell yeah. phones. They didn't invent them yet. So I'm sitting there. I said, I'm in a booth. This can't be for real. I look at the, pa the past performances in the racing form. This horse was shipped up, I think, from Mexico and hadn't run in like two years. This horse winds up at Atlantic City. Vince Timphony's the trainer. And I said... Oh my God! Da 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 da. da. What a pay! Twenty six dollars. Thanks for asking. And you had nothing on it. Zero. Larry, Across the board. You were kind of running out of time. I've got like eighteen questions for you. I got to narrow it down to one. You're good friends with Jeff Garrell, the new operator of the Meadowlands. He's known as a pretty serious guy. Can you make him laugh? Uh, absolutely, I can. I, you know, I, I think that's why he continues to talk to me. Uh, Jeff, yeah, you're a great guy, but I think you got bad taste. You made the right decision with Sam. Me, not so much. But Jeff has got a super heart. His heart is bigger than the Taj Mahal. And I thank Jeff for everything. And I, I can't do enough for Jeff. He, what, a, what a great guy. Well, Larry, we appreciate you taking some time to join us. We're going to buy you dinner tonight up in Terraces. But there are no free lunches. We want to hear you call a couple races. How about the third and fourth tonight? Would you go up to the booth and do that for us? Uh, I think we can, we, we can figure something out here. I got some candy. George, George Anthony, got some, you have some medicine for me? Yeah, okay. He's got, we'll, we'll get through this together, and I'll try to call the third and fourth. And you will get paid. Make some Here's sense. a $5 bill for you, partner. I don't have any change. Sorry. Larry, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck. Keep us posted on everything. We're all pulling for you. Sam, it's my pleasure, and thank to everybody out there who's been sending prayers and support. Larry Letterman, everyone, the voice of Freehold Raceway. Always good to catch up with him, and we'll catch up with Wendy Ross, who will put a hurting on the Hurt Series when we return.